All right, this uh, segment of our study of electrostatics will deal with the direction and basic shape of the field patterns around single uh, charges. So the direction of the electric field is always based upon uh, the test charge being assumed to be positive. So it's always going to be the direction that a positive charge would be uh, pushed or pulled by the field or the source charge in this case. So if Q down here is a negative charge, okay, and we put a positive test charge here at F, then the charge is going to get pulled toward the center of Q because opposites attract. Now the closer you are to the charge, the stronger the force is going to be. So if you look at letter B and letter C, they're very similar in terms of distance. So they're going to have a pretty large um, electric field vector at that point. They should be approximately the same. And if I draw them, they should cross right there at the center. Now D is about twice as far from the center as uh, C is. So when I draw that vector, it should probably be, and I'm just going to use color to try to show the difference, not, it should be about one quarter of the size of what I drew because it is based on the uh, one over the distance squared. So if I have twice as much distance, two squared means one fourth as much field strength or uh, field force. Uh, now E being way far away, uh, still it's an opposite charge, it'll get pulled, but the amount is going to be pretty small. Uh, same thing with F, also very small, but the direction again, and it's kind of hard to see if you're just drawing a small one like that, but if I work it and trace it through the center, they should all cross right here at the center. Now A is, and it's from the center, so here's the length of B, and here's the length of A, how the distance I am away. So when I go to draw that vector for A, um, it's farther away, it's approximately, again, twice as far away as B is, so it's going to be similar to the one I drew for D. Um, it's going to be about one quarter as big as what I was drawing before. And it's got to go through the center, so something along that line. Okay, so the direction is always in whatever direction the positive for a charge would be. So either pushed or pulled, depending on whether the uh, charge creating the field is positive or negative. Uh, and then it's going to go through the center of that charge because it is, after all, the center to center distance. Okay, now the patterns around basic charges, therefore. Um, <clears throat> here is a nice example of them having drawn some of the various forces uh, that we would see. See, this one's very close to the center, so you see how long the force is. This one is a little further away, so it's shorter. This one's further away yet still, so it's shorter. This one's further away, so it's significantly shorter. Now, it's not that it's that much further away, but it's one over the distance squared, so we see a drop off of the force very quickly. And again, if I trace all of those forces, they all go through the center. Now, uh, that's a negative charge, because the arrows are all pointing into the charge. Uh, this one must be a positive charge because the arrows are all pointing away from the center. And we see the same basic pattern in that, I see this one's a little bit longer than this one. This one's just a little bit closer to the center than this one is. Now this one's significantly farther away. You can see how small that force actually is. Okay. So the basic field pattern for a uh, negative source, the field lines, the pictures that we draw, now it's kind of hard the way they drew it. You can see these These are all the arrows. All right? So the arrows on the direction of the field for a negative charge is always going to be into that particular charge. Uh, over here on the right, I can tell it's a positive charge because the arrows are all facing away. And again, that's because if this was a positive test charge, Q0, uh, it would get pushed away from the center of the charge. Now the field pattern still has a couple of things. Um, one is that the closer the, uh, sorry, the number of field lines will give us some indication of the relative strength of uh, the charges. So here I have charge A, B, and C. First of all, I can all say they're, I can say they're all positive because the arrows are all pointing out. 
Second, I can say C is the strongest, uh, B is the next strongest, and then A is the weakest. And I can say that because the density of those lines, if you look at C, the density is very, there's a lot of lines packed in there around C. The number of lines is significantly larger in that space. Uh, B, less than C in terms of the density, the spacing here compared to the spacing over here. Uh, if we count the number of lines, we get some indication of the relative strength. Uh, this has definitely more lines than this one. And then over here on A, it has the fewest number of lines. We get the biggest spacing between um, each of the points. So the density, the number of lines in a space, gives you some indication of the overall strength of that charge. Uh, and then the other element is, in terms of the spacing, as the spacing between two lines increases, then the electric field strength is going to decrease. So if I look at these two lines here and I extend them a bit, you can see that they're on an arc. And as I move further and further away from the center, which is the place we measure everything from, uh, this positive charge, the lines get further apart. That's an indication that E here, I'll call it uh, E1, is going to be less than E here. I'll call it E2. So uh, it's going to be greater than E2, sorry. Uh, so E1 is greater than E2. One way to indicate that is clearly it's closer, so I would expect it to be greater. And then the field lines show that because this distance is smaller than this gap and spacing here. So these little lines, these are called equipotentials. This, is the, this line right here is a place where all of the electric field all the way around that charge, since it's a spherical charge, is the same. And then this spot here, this other grayed out area, that's the area where there, again, that's all the same as that in that space. Now that electric field strength here would be less than the electric field strength at the inner ring here. Okay, so the arrow is always point into the negative, out of the positive for any kind of electric charge. The relative uh, Size of the charge can be determined by the number of field lines. More lines packed into a space, more field density. Uh, that indicates a stronger electric field. And then finally, the spacing between individual lines tells us where the field is strongest and where it's weakest. It's always weakest where the spacing is larger. It's kind of an inverse relationship. And it's uh, strongest where the spacing is less. So that's the uh, basics of electric field lines. We'll uh, look at uh, patterns of multiple charges next.